Bless, good evening, and thank you, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. So last week, we started question uh, 21, and we had lesson A. So this will be the review. But before we do the review, we are going to hear our disclaimer. While we use this book, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, to address a set of questions and answers, as we travel through, we continue to meet up with statements that we do not agree with. As we study to show ourselves approved, we will share with you our response to questions based on scriptures of the Holy Bible as we study God's word in context. Some of you have the book and we advise you to make notes of where we differ in response and then go to YouTube, the YouTube teaching of our sessions for our interpretation of scripture. So lesson 21A review and the question 21 asks, who is the redeemer of mankind? And the answer, the only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the theme chosen by our team was the only redeemer, Jesus. Amen. And our one of our key proof scriptures is found in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 which reads, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So the emphasis is on Jesus Christ is the only redeemer of mankind. And this is reinforced in Acts chapter four, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the only redeemer of mankind. But what is a redeemer? Easton's Bible Dictionary defines the word redeemer as one charged with the duty, charged with the duty of restoring the rights of another by avenging his wrongs. This title is peculiarly applied to Jesus Christ. He redeems us all from all evil by the payment of a ransom. Now in the Old Testament, under the Levitical law, there had to be a sacrifice made by the shedding of blood from animals for the atonement of sins. And we read in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now, in the Old Testament, the animal sacrifice, the bloodshed of the animal was the atonement, but it was a temporary atonement. We move to the New Testament where Jesus, Jesus Christ's blood was shed as a ransom, shed as payment to secure our release from the bondage of sin. It was his very own life that was offered up as the price of redemption for our sins. So we are no longer under the law, no longer under the Levitical law. We are now under grace. Hallelujah. The New Testament readings, Colossians 1 verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And in Galatians 3, 13a, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Through the shed blood of Jesus, we have the complete and perfect atonement of mankind's sins. 
The animal sacrifice could not do this. The shed blood of Jesus provides atonement once and for all time. Now, there are some unbiblical conceptions. The modern ecumenical movement has digressed from the true saving grace of Jesus Christ. There is a conception that says that there is saving truth in all religions for those who are sincere and earnest. Through this movement, some churches belonging to the organizations such as the World Council of Churches have changed the true mission and they've changed and altered the truth of the gospel. They shy away from Jesus being the only redeemer of mankind. And they have conformed to the belief that there are many ways to salvation, many ways to God. Many have been led astray and fooled into thinking that this is right, that there is more than one way to God. And they are especially fooled when we have celebrities who endorse this false teaching, such as Oprah Winfrey. And last week we saw a very telling video, but a very profound statement from our pastor last week. Jesus is the only redeemer, pastor said last week. Don't be starstruck. Be Jesus focused. Jesus is the only way. But why do we say, why is Jesus the only redeemer? Jesus alone is qualified to be our redeemer because Jesus is God. Jesus is the only redeemer because Jesus himself has told us this. Jesus is God. We have proof of this. Jesus is called God. Jesus has the attributes of God. Jesus is able to do the mighty works of God. Jesus is given the worship that belongs properly to God. We have the scripture references there that prove these things. Jesus Christ is God. And so therefore, we can trust what Jesus tells us when he says that he is the redeemer. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, he answered, I am, there's a declaration of his divinity right there. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus himself tells us that he is the only redeemer, the only way to salvation, the only way to God. And so to review, question 21 says, who is the redeemer of mankind? The answer the only, the only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. And our theme, the only redeemer, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for our Reverend Dr. Wendy Woods. Amen. She said a loud, strong, affirmative Jesus. I tell you, I tell you, you can call every other name, every other false idol, but when you call on the name of Jesus, that's the only time demons are going to flee, folks. That's the only time when you have authority. And that's why there is an attack on Christianity and the name of Jesus. Everybody else can do all the craziness, but when you say Jesus, then you're the real deal has just showed up. 
Anybody glad they're worshiping Jesus? Anybody glad that Jesus is our redeemer? We aren't worth two cents and a penny, but he came down, gave his life, and now we are children of the king. Hallelujah. And we have a mansion, folks. Don't you fool yourself. The word says it. There's a mansion. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm telling you, it's what the word of God says. Oh, because Jesus is my redeemer. Personal. Hallelujah. We got to keep on celebrating Jesus, folks. I'm telling you. Amen. Thank you again, Reverend Dr. Woods, for that. I just love it when we're lifting up the name of Jesus. Well, at this time, we're going to hand over the Zoom teaching time mic to our Reverend Stephen Trapp. Put your hands together and welcome the man of God. Good evening, Pastor. Thank you much. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Woods, for that wonderful review. God bless you. Well, tonight, we're going to focus on part B of our question 21. Well, before I start, I just want to introduce uh, my team. <laughs> so, Pastor said, I'll be doing the last one. Well, I do have a team, so I do want to introduce to introduce my team. So you want to introduce Deaconess Tyra Simmons, uh, Alda Juliet Rogers, our uh, Reverend Jennifer Oldboy, and Mother Maxine De Silva. So I want to thank them. I especially want to thank them because I had to go work last week and have heard plenty of good reports that they filled in and done a good job. So I, I already thank them. I just want to thank them um, publicly. So thank you, team. All right, let's move on and let's get into our lesson. All right, we're going to go back to our slide. Question 21, 21B. Who is the redeemer of mankind? And the answer is the only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we did come up with a theme for this lesson. The theme for this lesson is the only redeemer, Jesus. Amen. The only redeemer is Jesus. Now, and we have some proof scriptures. And one scripture in 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Then we had John 1 and 14. Another scripture says, And the word was made flesh. And dwell amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And Hebrews 7, 24 says, But this man, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Amen. So those were some of our proof scriptures we had for this lesson. Well, in this lesson, I want you all to just sit back and relax. As we discussed this lesson, we took it more to the fact that to honor and to understand you, you'll get to know a little bit more about it. But I want you to get this on um, in the back of your mind. As we studied this lesson, we took it from Jesus being fully man and Jesus being fully God. All right, so I just want you to remember that. Uh, keep that in the back of your head. All right, as we move on to this lesson, we will now look at the result, even as we talked about Jesus being the redeemer, the redeemer. So we're going to look at some of those results and we're going to look at it. how oh, Jesus was fully man and fully God. So I want to invite uh, Mother De Silva. You can read the next two slides for us, please. Though we know how the word became flesh, our focus will not be on how he came to earth. Her beginning of the reading of God's holy word, Luke 1, 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Thank you, Mother Lee Silva. Thank you very much. And we will now move on uh, to Elder Rogers. But as we talked about those two slides, uh, we will not focus on Jesus' birth. Uh, we will not focus too much on that. We will find out a little bit more about that in future lessons. 
but we will focus more on how Jesus was fully man and fully God in this lesson. So uh, Elder Rogers, can you unmute? We will look at the result while he was here on earth that God the Son became man without ceasing to be God. Some believe and see Jesus just as a man and not in the same substance, equal in power and glory with the Father and Holy Spirit. There are those who believe Jesus had two different personalities. We know from earlier lessons that there is only one God and Jesus being the second of the Godhead. They all are one. Thank you, Elder Rogers, appreciate that. As we did learning our previous lessons, um, as Jesus being part of the Godhead, understanding that Jesus is God, all right, as, as we went through those lessons already. Um, Reverend Jan, can you unmute? Thank you. Yes, Jesus, human and divine. And we have a YouTube video, a short one, that you can sit back and just take a look at. Thank you. Why is the humanity of Jesus important? We're going to answer that question. You can also discover more on gotquestions.org. The humanity of Jesus is as equally important as the deity of Jesus. Jesus was born as a human being while still being totally divine. The concept of the humanity of Jesus coexisting with his deity is difficult for the finite mind of man to comprehend. Nevertheless, Jesus' nature, holy man and holy God, is a biblical fact. There are those who reject these biblical truths and declare that Jesus was a man, but not God. Ebionism. Docetism is the view that Jesus was God, but not human. Both viewpoints are unbiblical and false. Jesus had to be born as a human being for several reasons. One is outlined in Galatians, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Only a man could be born under the law. No animal or angelic being is under the law. Only humans are born under the law, and only a human being could redeem other human beings born under the same law. Born under the law of God, all humans are guilty of transgressing that law. Only a perfect human, Jesus Christ, could perfectly keep the law and perfectly fulfill the law, thereby redeeming us from that guilt. Jesus accomplished our redemption on the cross, exchanging our sin for his perfect righteousness. Another reason Jesus had to be fully human is that God established the necessity of the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. The blood of animals, although acceptable on a temporary basis as a foreshadowing of the blood of the perfect God-man, was insufficient for the permanent remission of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, sacrificed his human life and shed his human blood to cover the sins of all who would ever believe in him. If he were not human, this would have been impossible. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Only a human could sympathize with our weaknesses and temptations. In his humanity, Jesus was subjected to all the same kinds of trials that we are, and he is, therefore, able to sympathize with us and to aid us. He was tempted, he was persecuted, he was poor, he was despised, he suffered physical pain, and he endured the sorrows of a lingering and most cruel death. Only a human being could experience these things and only a human being could fully understand them through experience. Declaring that Jesus has come in the flesh is the mark of a spirit from God, while the Antichrist and all who follow him will deny it. Jesus has come in the flesh. He is able to sympathize with our human frailties. His human blood was shed for our sins, and he was fully God and fully man. These are biblical truths that cannot be denied. That answers the question, why is the humanity of Jesus important? Hebrews 2, 16, 17. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things 
it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. If God wanted to come in the form of an angel or anything else, he really could have, but he left his place in glory to be made like us, the first Adam. Only a man could be born under law, under the law. No animal or angelic being is under the law. Only humans are born under the law and only a human being could redeem other human beings born under the same law. Born under the law of God, all humans are guilty of transgressing the law. Only Jesus is perfect. Only a perfect human, Jesus Christ, could perfectly keep the law and perfectly fulfill the law, thereby redeeming us from that guilt. Jesus accomplished our redemption on the cross, exchanging our sin for his perfect righteousness. Gutquestions.org. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He did it for me. Amen. Thank you, Deaconess Tyra. And we have our next slide. Now, while on earth, Jesus in his humanity, he had to feel and to go through some of the same things that we had to go through even today. But let's look at a few of these things. Now, Jesus, he was tempted. Remember in Matthew, in Matthew 4, he was tempted by the devil as he fasted. Jesus was frustrated in Matthew 17 when his disciples had unbelief, when they lacked faith. Jesus got frustrated. And Jesus got angry, but he said not. And in Mark 3 and 5, he got angry at the Pharisees. Why? Because Jesus, when he wanted to heal on the Sabbath day, he got frustrated at these Pharisees. Well, Jesus cried. Everybody remembers that, that famous scripture. Jesus what? Jesus wept. <laughs> Everybody should know that scripture. So Jesus did a cry, amen? Jesus was happy. All right, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit in Luke 10 and 21. Jesus was humble in Philippians 2, 5 and 8. Remember when Jesus humbled himself as a man. He was obedient even unto death. He was humble. Jesus had compassion. He had compassion to two blind men. Ask them, what will thou want me to do? And Jesus healed them. So he had compassion in Matthew 20 and 34. And Jesus had a will as he was here as a man. Remember when Jesus was in the garden, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. And Jesus did thirst in John 19 when he was on the cross. He did thirst. So we want to understand that Jesus, even in his humanity, even as God, Jesus still went through some of the things that we went through, even as men and women today. Well, we can see through our scripture, while Jesus was here on earth, that he was fully human and fully divine at the same time. Jesus performed many miracles throughout the Bible. He also performed many signs and wonders just by his word. I want to bring on Mother D. Silva. In Luke chapter 8, the disciples in the boat crossing to the other side met up with a storm at sea. Jesus was there but asleep. They woke Jesus from his rest. He was human. And Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves and they obeyed his voice. That's when he became divine. Thank you, Mother Lee Silva. I just want to acknowledge, thank you, Mother Lee Silva. It was one of the points that she brought up. So I just want to thank you. And we wanted to make sure we did emphasize that. And even when, as Jesus was on the boat, he was sleeping. They were afraid. As Jesus got up, spoke to the waves and the winds, and they obeyed his voice. And we saw how he was defined. 
So I just wanted to even thank you even for sharing that part of it. I wanted to put it in the PowerPoint. Thank you, Mother D. Silva. Elder Rogers? When they put Jesus on the cross, we saw that he was human and divine. He said, I thirst. They pierced Jesus in his side, blood and water poured out, human. When he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit, divine. Thank you, Elder Rogers. As we move on, um, our Reverend Jan. We can see and know that the second person in the Godhead Jesus has no beginning and had no end. When he came to earth, he had a beginning. We celebrate his birth, but never has an end. Jesus is eternal, where we can say he probably went back to the future. <laughs> and, as, <laughs> and as we look at these uh, famous brother Shorty, and we can, we can see in that diagram there, all right, as you see it, and there's that heavy book, you can see this diagram of brother Shorty. You can see how Jesus, even as he was human and as he was divine, uh, as was said, as Jesus had to go ahead, remember he was, he was already in the beginning. He had no beginning. He was already there, all right? And he has no end, understanding that he is eternal. Thank you, Reverend Jan. Jesus had to be as we are yet without sin because one day those that accept him as Lord and Savior will then be like him. And our deaconess Tyra. First John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. What we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Luke 24, 6 through 8. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Jesus is no longer here on earth, but ascended to be seated on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. Philippians 3.21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Thank you, Deaconess Tyra. So we, we pray as God and those that have accepted him as Lord and Savior, we do look forward to that day uh, that we will get that glorious body. Amen. And we're looking forward to that day. Some of you want to uh, lose some pounds and some things you're not happy with. And you look in the mirror, you will have a nice, glorious body. Amen. So we, we thank God that he will come back for us one day. So we just have to continue to do what we have to do. Amen. Do our part. Amen. And as we do our part, let's win souls to the kingdom. Well, we receive the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Christ rather than having his physical presence here. Well, it represents his body broken and blood shed on Calvary. The human body was ripped into pieces. He bled and he died for the sins of the world on that cruel cross. For those who choose to accept him as Lord and Savior may now experience his divine nature, amen? And we, we thank God because now we can experience this as Christians. And we do take our time to remember what he went through on a cross, on a cruel cross. He died for all of our sins. The Bible said, even yet while we were sinners, he died for us. While we were doing our thing, that's one of my favorite scriptures. He, while we were yet in our sins, he had you, had me on his mind. I said, I just want to encourage even those who are outside the ark of safety, that even while you're yet stealing your sin, he had you on his mind. It's not too late. It's not back. It's not returned yet. So it's never too late to accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. Uh, let's finish our slides. Well, as we end our 
section 21b. And our question was, who is the redeemer of mankind? And the answer is, the only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. And our theme, the only redeemer, Jesus, amen. Our only redeemer is Jesus. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you, you learned something. Hope you'll be able to take something that you did learn and then apply it to your life. And even as we do, and it'll be our commission to go out and win souls to show people that Jesus is the only redeemer. Thank you, team. I thank you for your, your reading and thank you for your participation. And Pastor, we turn it over to you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Stephen and team. Amen. So one of your members calls you the A-team. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> she gave herself away. There you go. Well, we thank God for the clear teaching. Amen. The clear teaching. Um, you know, the simplicity of the gospel is the enemy's job is, I don't even know if it's a job. It's just what he does is bring confusion because God clears up confusion. And I felt that the teaching tonight was totally clear. It's a beautiful thing. Here's the key. It's really all about Jesus. The moment that you veer away from Jesus, you've, you've missed it. There is no equal. There is no other. So I just want to mention a couple of things, and then we are done. Uh, but some things that really bless my heart in a new way, because it all blessed my heart. Well, I love that scripture. And um, I think when I did Bible quiz as a teen, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. There is no idol that will cause us to behold the glory of God. There is no man-made image that can be glorious and can emanate or show forth light. Again, this is why folks are constantly coming against Jesus. <laughs> They're never going to defeat him. However, because mankind have so many options out there, the sins of the world have increased over the decades, over the centuries. They're diverted, and they're not grasping or receiving Jesus Christ. But he, he's the only one that has the glory. Hallelujah. And then, yep, you, people are going to try to deny the biblical facts. That's another reason they've got to try to get rid of the Bible. It's a playbook. Okay, it's our live book. It's our eternity book. People want to try to get rid of it and change it and thusly take out the authority. But that's why we as Christians have to keep on lifting up the name of Jesus. Then I thought it was interesting. Uh, one of the slides mentioned that animals and angels could not do. They could not suffice. And of course, I saw it, I went A-A, but the second A could, Adam. So angels couldn't do it. Animals could not do it. The first Adam failed, but here comes Jesus, a.k.a. the second Adam. And he fulfilled the law. He was born under so that we could live over. <laughs> Oh, semen. He was born under, became a curse. So I wouldn't have to go back and try to fulfill the law. Why would I be going back to a curse when Jesus? Oh, here it is. Look at him. Let me read this again. Thank you, superintendent. Only a man could be born under the law. No animal or angelic being is under the law. Only humans are born under the law. Yeah, that got me too. Because you can't take a, you can't, you can't take a cockroach to court. Oh, Lord. You can't take a dog to, you can take the earner, but you can't take a, <laughs> go and arrest that dog, go and arrest that horse. You can't do that. Only humans. So therefore, the animal sacrifice could not suffice because the animal could not fulfill the curse of the law, take on the full weight. That's why we got, we're not under law. 
We're under grace. My God, I hope you're getting that at another level. Boy, we're going to celebrate Jesus on Sunday. I'm looking forward. I'm excited. And then this final point that I really want to emphasize is a two-parter. A, we shall see him as he is and we shall be as he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus now with the Father, when he returns and hovers in the sky in that same cloud, this same cloud that you're looking up, looking at, the one that took Jesus, he's returning. He's catching the same elevator, folks. <laughs> and it's going to be in the air. And as they saw him go, we're going to see him return and be caught up to meet him. Yep, here we go. But we know that we, when he shall appear, we shall be what? Like him. That's right. All the way dropped off. You know, <laughs> for we shall see him as he is. You can't listen to me. You can't see Jesus as he is unless you've accepted him now. So the only people being raptured are those who are by faith seeing. Say that again, Simon. The only people that are going to be raptured are those who are walking by faith, not by sight. And in walking by faith and not by sight, one day we're going to be uh, raptured up because of our faith and we'll have sight of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, this is so wonderfully special. And then my final point I wanted to mention right at the end is that <laughs> animals are temporary. Animals are temporary. So when, the, when they used to kill in, under the Levitical law, the lamb, that lamb, I'm going to say it slow so nobody misses it. The lamb that they killed, the blood of that lamb was temporary because that animal died forever. Okay. Yep, Let, let's read this to back it up. Superintendent, you are on the ball. Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Animal sacrifice ow, was temporary. Under the law is temporary. Say it again, Seaman. You put the ones in the back. Okay. Under the law is temporary. Oh, we appreciate the pathway, but listen, Jesus came to fulfill the law. Now, the difference is, is that when Jesus died, did he die forever? No, no. He resurrected and he, he ever liveth to make intercession. So I don't need any more bulls and goats and pigeons and turtle doves and the curse of the law. No. He paid it. Hallelujah. To secure our release. From the bondage of sin. It, it, it was his very own life that was offered up as, as the price of redemption for our lives. All right? There you go. No longer under law, but under grace. And that's the reason that the Pharisees had a fit with him. Because they want to keep on talking about the law. And it's like, I'm the Lord of it. I, 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 I lord over the law because I fulfilled it. I am in charge. That's what Jesus is saying. And so it goes back to our theme. We celebrate that Jesus is the only redeemer. Animals can't redeem us. Angels can't redeem us. Nothing under the law can redeem us. But he came under the law to take on the full penalty. Hallelujah. Of our sins. So that he could, as it were, Kill the law and resurrect grace. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. Well, as you can tell, I'm, I'm ready for Sunday. It's tomorrow Sunday. Tomorrow's not Sunday, Elder Seaman. No, he, he laughed at me. No, tomorrow's Thursday. Yet, I'm excited. And I want to thank you, Reverend Stephen. And your team, amen, for just the simplicity of the gospel. It ain't got to be that deep. Now, all these spooky stuff that they're trying in the world's deep. That's deep. That's drawn and deep. 
The gospel simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's, that's all. It, it ain't got to be deep. Just believe it. Believe that it's been done. And when you do, oh, you shall have eternal life. You're not going to just die, right? Because you're not an animal. And you're not an angel. You're going to live again. And the question is, amen, as the, I'll quote them, A-team. I'm just quoting what they call themselves, the A-team. Amen. <laughs> that when, when we die, it's only into his presence for eternity. We just win. Any old way we win. I guess people just don't like simply winning so easy. We win because of the shed blood of our Redeemer, the only Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And so to the team, I see their deaconess, Tyra Simmons, Mother Maxine De Silva, Amen, Reverend Jennifer Oldboy, Elder Juliet Rogers, and team leader, uh, Reverend Stephen Trott. Let's put our hands together for them one more time. Amen. Wow. Very refreshing. That's all I'm going to say. Well, folks, you've heard the teaching. I certainly want to give you an opportunity to make your calling and election sure. The work has been done. Stop trying to do it. Oh, I'm going to wait until I get my act together. Sorry, too late. Jesus already got it together for us. So if you're trying something, you're making yourself an idol. Oops, I better stop because that's my Sunday sermon coming up. Um, so what we want you to do is accept the finished work. See that? Where are we at? On the cross right there. there you finished work on the cross of Calvary. He did it for you. He did it for me. And all you have to do is confess, say it, speak it, speak it while you can, while you have life. Jesus, come into my heart today. Just like that. If you mean it, it's done. Now, if you've done that, you need a church home, a place where the teaching of the Bible is taught. We're serious about it. Yeah, you need that. That's why God established gifts for the house of God. Not for Maria's house, not for Jennifer's house, for the house of God where we all gather together. And we would love for you to come at Shekinah. I see a number of you when I'm going through town or wherever. You know the deal and you know who's real. Come on down to Shekinah Worship Center and you will be blessed. Thank you for tuning in today, uh, tonight I should say. Amen. And certainly too, um, you can put me on the gallery as we prepare to bid adieu to the folks. Um, to Reverend Eunice, I always, is she still here? Let me check where she at. Oh, there she is. Amen. We always give a shout out to our Beacons for Christ because that's four hours ahead. Some of us are struggling and we're on Bermuda time. Did I say something? Mm hmm So, so therefore, we're, we're blessing God for you being there four hours ahead of us. Everyone, want, wasn't the teaching? Put your hands together again. Let's, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you. <laughs> We won and we didn't even have to like do anything. Jesus did it all. But we do have to be sanctified now and say, Jesus, because you did it, we're going to be committed to you. We're going to be committed to you. Those of you on Facebook tuning in, God bless you. Have a good night. Again, you are welcome to be uh, with us this coming Sunday. Well, we've got a couple of things happening tomorrow night. We've got ETC and... That's at 6.30 Bermuda time. And then if you've got a young person, are they in school this week? Yeah, if you've got a young person, you got YES, which is Youth Empowering Soldiers. That's our youth night program at Shekinah, 6.30. Okay, two 6.30s. And then on Sunday, Oh, I know you've been viewing it, some of you on Swim TV, Sunday School. I love the answers or, or the comments. That's at 9.30, right? Because we're serious. If you're serious, you're showing up. Because we want to be fully equipped. What's coming on the pipeline, we want to be fully equipped. Sunday School at 9.30 for the children and for the adults. We've got it covered. And then at 11 a.m., we have a morning worship service. And I'm telling you, I had myself some church editing Sunday going. I did, that's probably half of what wore me out. I listened to the song over and over. I had so much fun. Amen. 
So we're thankful for all that we've got going on at Shekinah Worship Center. And you are welcome. Well, we're going to end it for tonight after this fabulous teaching. And you know what we're saying, folks. What are we saying? Blessings abound. Bye. Amen. Thank you, God.